Hi there, Lindy Goodall here from Lindy G Embroidery. In this video, I'll be taking a design we added previously to create a new block and doing a few more modifications to create a black and white version or a two color version instead of our single color version. Now here's the design we added it in the last video. And what we've done is we've merged in this design that has the black lines and that's a free design on the website that you can download. And we've also merged in the second design from Quilted Feather Blocks. So this is the large design, not the largest one, but the large one. And then what we've done is we've edited in some color changes to move these corner blocks out a bit more to add a little bit more space in the design. So hopefully you saved this. And if you didn't, then you'll need to go back and watch that video before you can do this one. So let me show you what we're going to do now. We're going to take the same design. We're going to replace that first section with a different design. So basically the only difference in this design and the other one is that the diagonal lines have been removed. So on this one, this whole pie shape here is going to be colored. So the ones that have the white designs in them will be inked in black. So that will be inked in black, that will be inked in black, black, black. And then the stitching will be in white on top. So it'll be a nice high contrast design. So to do that, we're going to need to do a little bit more work. Now it's a piece of cake to change these guys out here that we've already separated into different colors. But in here, we're going to take the same approach that we did to, to uh, change these colors to extract them, but we're going to have to add tie-offs because this design starts here and works all the way around. And so this design will have a beginning tie in. This one will have an ending tie out, but no tie in, no tie out. And these won't have any tie ins or tie outs. So we're going to have to add those or our design could start coming apart. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to go back to this design and I'm going to do a save as. So we'll do save as stitch and working file. You know, you always want to have your working file, even if it contains stitch files. And we'll call this block two. And now what I want to do is I want to replace this background. So I'm just going to click on that design element and hit delete. And we'll go to merge. And we'll bring in the new design which is that one. So there it is. Step one is done. And now what we need to do is to break these up into different colors. So let's move this back earlier. So at least it's in the right sewing order. And now we're going to work on this pink part. And let's um, hide that to make it easier. So we're going to go into our good friend the sewing simulator, the stitch simulator. And we're going to run the design up to where it starts that next piece. And it can be kind of difficult to figure that out, but not too bad. And I think it's right there. So I'm going to click the stop sign, click a color change, click OK. Now you can see that from that point on, the design is a different color. So we'll Travel again, and use the single stitch arrow keys to get to that one point, and I think it's back about two stitches, and enter stop, click another color, do that again, so we can isolate our last little bit. Now I didn't plan these designs to split here, it just kind of worked out that way. So I can't guarantee that all of the designs in this collection will split right at the, the part. If I was smart, I digitized them that way, but you never know what you're going to do with the design sometimes when you're doing the initial digitizing. So there we have our elements split, and now we, we're going to have to add the tie-off stitches, the lock stitches on these elements. These already have them because when you have a design that's already separated like that, it'll have lock stitches. 
And if this design were digitized as a two-color design this way, they would already have lock stitches on them too. So let's see how to add lock stitches. So to add the lock stitches, you're going to need to have Enthusiast installed. So Essentials is a design customizer and Enthusiast is a stitch editor. So we need to be able to get in and tweak the stitches if we're going to make these lock off properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this element and I'm going to click on this button. Now this button's real handy. You notice it says reverse selection. So what it's going to do is it's going to select everything except what I had selected. And now I can hide all that stuff. And if I click out here, now I can just see my design. And I think that's a pretty cool feature. So we're going to find the end of this design. And it's somewhere right around in there. And we'll, we'll just pick a stitch. And I'm going to use the forward arrow keys. And I'm going to watch this little number up here. So we're going to go until it won't go any farther. And that's stitch 1624. So that's the end of, end of the line. And I'm going to right click on that stitch. And I'm going to click ensure type of four. And then now that one's done. So I can click on my design over here. I can click the unlock button and now everything's visible again and we're back out. So now I'm going to do that again on this one. Click that, click reverse, click hide, click on your window work area and we'll select this box or this design, this block and I'm already on the first stitch so I can do Ensure tie after, and then I'm going to move somewhere over here and hit my arrow keys. My four, I'm going forward in the design. Okay, so let's go back one stitch. We want to have the last stitch selected and do ensure tie before. Now I've tied off that one, so I'm going to repeat that on the next one. I'll do that one more time. So we'll select our design, unhide everything and unlock it, and then we'll select this piece. Select reverse, click on reverse and hide and click on your document window. Go into stitch edit. We're on the first stitch. So I'm going to right click, ensure tie after, and then go somewhere over here. And, oh look, I clicked on the very last stitch. So I'm going to ensure tie before, and then exit that, select my design, show everything, now this one, because it's the end of that first section, is already going to have a tie out. So all we have to do is put the tie in on it. So I'll reverse the selection, hide it, click on my document window, click my object, and then do ensure tie after. And then select my design and do that. So that was the hard part. Now we have the fun part of coloring everything. So it kind of looks like we already have it colored correctly. But let's, um, let's see, this one was going to be black. And let's make it black. I don't know what color black is in the Brother palette here. So we'll just type in black and hit go. And there's black, color number 100. And we'll make this opposite one black, 100, go, black. And then we'll make this one black, 
100, go, black, and we'll make this one black. Then we can um, set these other ones to, I'm just going to set them to silver so they're more apparent on the screen. And there's silver right there. We make them white. They may not be very visible on my white background. And if you've left your system at the default, you'll have a yellow background, but I just like working on a white background. That's what I'm used to working in in other programs. So I've set my background to white in the preferences. So there's what we want. However, it's not the right sewing order because it's going to sew this black. In fact, let's just go into the sewing simulator and we'll see how it's going to sew. Let's turn this back on. And we'll go back into the stitch simulator. And I'm just going to whiz through here. Well, you can see right up here. It is black, silver, black, silver, black, silver, black, silver. And I mean, do you really want to change your thread that many times? Even if you're sewing on a multi-needle machine, that's not an efficient way to sew. So let's fix that. Now, yes, there is color sort. We don't want to do that. We're smart people. We know how we want this to sew. And what we need to do is figure out where does this first piece end? So in the sewing simulator, we can just find out where that is. And look, it's right over here on the right side. So it's going to sew that white design first. And we can start there or we could start with the black. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stitching this black color first because if I'm going to do this as a black and white design, I want my lines to be the same color that I'm inking in. Because as you may have seen in the other video on the inking part, you really, really need to sew those lines in the same color that you're going to ink so that your blocks look like they're, the seams match. So I want to, instead of starting with the white, I want to start with the black. So I'm going to um, exit this. And I want to start with this design. So I just have to find it there. And I can just say move earlier. And then when we sew embroidery designs, it's best if the design the machine can have minimal shifting around. So we have a decision to make. Should we go here next? Should we go here next? And I think that I, we should just go in and out, in and out. So that's what I'm going to do. So now I need to find this one, and he's way down there. And I'm just going to move him up, and I'll find this guy, and I'll move him up. And I'm going to find this guy and move him up. Now I'm going to select the next one, and look, he's the right order. Um, the next one will probably be this guy over here, so I need to move this guy in between. So now we have that one, that one, that one, that one. So now let's go back to our stitch simulator. And look, now we have a two-color design. Now what we might want to do, this is what I did when I programmed in my design. I set the first color as actually a, another color and I just set it as an applique stop so that it will sew this black outline first and stop. I have a multi-needle machine. I don't want to have to sit there and remember when to stop my machine. So by programming in a stop, I can have the machine stop for me. Then I'll take my hoop out. I'll ink in my areas, let it dry. Actually, you can make it dry faster with a hairdryer. And then you're going to put the hook back in the machine and finish sewing the design. So let's exit out of the sewing simulator. And those are just two real world examples of how I've edited designs. Now, yes, I did this in my digitizing software because that's where the designs were created. But you can get the same kind of work done in, in Brilliance. And if you only have in Brilliance Essentials, then when you start getting more advanced in your editing and splitting designs apart and extracting little pieces and 
doing minor surgery, I, I consider this minor surgery, then you're going to want to have enthusiasts so you can add those um, tie-off stitches because otherwise your embroidery is not going to be very permanent. It's going to fall out. So I hope you can see how these skills, while pretty basic, can be used on a lot of different designs and you could do a lot of really cool things. So give it a try. Play around with some of your own designs. Now you can download these background blocks for free. The um, quilted blocks are not free but they're very reasonably priced. You can get them individually or as a collection. And then you can make your own table runners or you don't have to make a table runner. You could turn this on point and put it on the back of a vest or a jacket or something. Or it would make a nice pillow cover. It's a lot of fun and you can just make a single block. You don't have to make four or five of them like I did for the table runners. But they're very easy. The inking takes the most time. So if you don't do the inking step, you don't even have to do any of the editing and you don't have to do the inking and so you can whip out a table runner in in a day or so. So I hope you've learned something new and I hope you give this a shot. See you in the next video.